Hypothetical situation. You have $15,000 and you want to set up a brand new workshop. How do you spend that money? I'll tell you what I did and just how much I regret my decisions. In November of that year, we bought a new house and in looking for one, I had to make sure that it had a good space for our workshop. This one had it. It was a complete blank slate, which is amazing. It's also pretty expensive. I was very lucky to have $15,000 that I had saved up over years and years and years of using a whole lot of nothing to get by. That is a ton of money and I was super stressed that I was gonna make the wrong decisions, screw up, and blow it. I was bringing over very little for my previous shop because I was just scraping to get by because I don't want to spend the money. So I was using things like a kitchen table for an outfeed table or folding tables for workbenches. That means I was not going to already have stuff to really set up my shop and I was starting truly from scratch. Before I could get to the fun stuff, I had to do all the prep work, which meant some drywall, taping and mudding and did some trim like window sills. These weren't really that expensive, but it was a whole lot of work and took a whole lot of time. Then came the first major expense. I had a licensed professional come out and install a whole lot of outlets, which meant having 120 outlets, having 230 outlets. To do this properly, you kind of have to have an idea of what type of tools you're getting, what the power supply is going to be, where you want those in the shop. And well, I didn't really have all of that. I didn't have an answer for electrician and I had to just make some guesses. At the time, the electrical work cost me about $1,200. And as a follow-up, because I didn't have those tools picked out or at least where those rough locations were gonna be, I had to call the electrician out later on in the year to do even more work, install more outlets, and actually install a whole new sub panel because I maxed out my current one. At this point, I'm already down to like $12,000 and I haven't bought any of the fun stuff. I was bringing over a pretty good contractor saw from my old space into my new one. So the first real purchase was the supplies to make an assembly table because I really wanted to have a good assembly slash out table after using a kitchen table for so long. So I bought some five by five foot Baltic birch plywood, threw it together to make my assembly table. You're looking at nails and glue and screws and all the things that you need to make a table. But you know what? I still use that table to this day and it is freaking amazing. So. No complaints there. It was winter in Michigan, so I took a break for a while, focused on getting the family acclimated to the new house. We picked up Fitzy Boy, so that was always great, and really spent my time doing the research on tools because there are so many choices. Finally, I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I got antsy, so I bought a ton of hand tools. I'm kind of surprised because, well, I use hand tools. I'm a power tool woodworker mainly, so I don't know why I did this. I bought several types of hand planes, chisels, marking knives, squares, straight edges. That stuff was sneaky expensive, so then I realized I spent over $1,000 on this stuff. Look at my balance. I'm now around $10,000, a little bit more than that. That means I've burned through almost $5,000 and I don't actually have the tools that I will typically use on a daily basis. A little bit later on, I'll tell you just how much I regretted some of these decisions. My first actual power tool purchase was a Festool ETS-150. That and a whole bunch of sandpaper added up to $426. It was really important to me to have a great sander after using some really terrible ones for so long, so I made sure that I really splurged on this one. Then July hit, and that's when things got real. July 7th, I purchased the big tools. I picked up a jet joiner, a Rikon bandsaw, and a jet air filtration system. One of the few tools that I brought over with me was a DeWalt lunchbox planer. So I wasn't gonna put planer at the top of my list at this time. If I didn't have a planer at all, it would have been. So instead, I picked up the joiner. Based off the budget that I had, what I was looking for, it really came down to two major brands, which was Grizzly and Jet, and then all of the options. So do you want six inch, eight inch, 10, 12, straight knives, helical head, all kinds of options there. I knew I wanted at least the eight inch joiner with helical head, but ultimately I decided on getting a six inch with straight knives. Just before I hit purchase, I realized that I'm married to a feisty Italian girl who knows her way around an argument. And she was pretty set on me not buying that because she knew that I wanted the eight inch helical and I'd been waiting forever. So she talked me into getting the one that I really wanted. And that's the one that I still have today. The joiner, the mobility base and freight shipping cost me about $2,300. Like I said, I picked up the jet air filtration system and the right Icon bandsaw at that same time. Well, the air filtration system was just under $400. The bandsaw, a mobility base, and a brand new blade cost me $1,320. Again, I'm gonna tell you a little bit later on how much I regret these particular ones. Now my $15,000 is down to a little over 6,000 and well, that was scary. 
But fortune favors the bold. And just a couple days after I made those purchases, Rockler came out with this huge jet tool sale and the tools I bought were on sale drastically. It felt like a gut punch because at least one of these tools had already shipped at this point. So what do you do? Well, thing is, is I happen to know a feisty Italian girl and she knows her way around an argument. So next thing you know, a phone call to Rockler gets me $291 refunded back, which was the difference between the sales price and the price that I paid. Just in case you're unaware, Jet usually has two major sales of the year, one in the summer and one towards the winter, just after Thanksgiving around that time. Rockler was also giving away a $50 gift card with the purchase of the air filtration system, so I got that too. I picked up some moving supplies, straps, chain hoists, so not super expensive, but things that were absolutely necessary. But before I even got to that point, well, I had to actually get that joiner and even though it was supposed to ship just a couple days after I purchased it, I did get an email from Rockler saying, yeah, it's on back order for a month and a half. Not cool because it says it ships in just a couple days. But I just so happen to know a feisty Italian girl who knows her way around an argument. Next thing you know, Rockler gives me a $50 gift card for my troubles. So now we're into August, knowing that I moved into this house in November. So it's slow progress. And this is where I focused on getting dust collection. My shop's a pretty good space. So I had to make sure it had enough power to be able to get dust collection to the tools I want on the entire other side of the shop. I went back and forth on different models, but really it only came down to two major brands I was looking at, a Clearview and an Oneida. I kind of like the options that Oneida was offering at the time, so I picked up a three horsepower Cyclone. I still wasn't exactly sure where I wanted all my tools, so I didn't spend money on ductwork that would be permanently installed. Instead, I just bought a really large flex hose, moved it from tool to tool until I could figure out kind of how I wanted my layout to look. Dust collector, steel drum, some accessories, the flex hose, all ended up being about $2,400. And I have officially crossed the $10,000 barrier. I am now down into the fours. Since I did get some of the bigger tools out of the way, that's when I focused on getting a table saw. So this was an upgrade because I already had a contractor saw. And the saw, mobility base, some accessories like blade, inserts, all that cost me over $2,800. And well, at this point, my account looked pretty anemic. The last major purchase I made to set up my shop was a drill press. So I ended up going with a jet stand-up drill press, but I was able to find one locally at a store. I didn't have to pay shipping or freight service or anything, but still ended up costing me a mind-boggling $953. There goes my budget it is completely blown, but now I can step back and go, all right, what decisions did I make that I really regret? Starting with the layout of the shop. It would have been nice if I would have spent a little bit more time making a few more walls here or there just to give it a little bit more dimension so not everything is just around the perimeter of the shop. But not a big deal. I can still do it now. It just would require moving things and well, I don't feel like doing that. No regrets when it comes to electrical because I opted for more outlets than less, but even still, I could always use more. It would have been nice to have a couple in the ceiling in certain places, but no big deal. Over a thousand dollars on hand tools. Yes, very much regret. And it has nothing to do with the actual quality of the tools. I love some of these tools, especially the planes. Man, I use them quite often. So it's not that, it's more of that I should have bought them as I needed them. I use power tools mainly, I should have focused on that. The Festool Sander, however, fantastic, love it. Don't regret it whatsoever. The jet joiner. Well, the joiner is actually kind of one of my favorite tools in the shop. I don't really know why. Maybe I'm kind of weird that way. I'm absolutely thankful that I did the eight inch and the helical head. I could even use a bigger joiner. I don't think you can go big enough when it comes to a joiner. And the helical head, oh, it's magical. The air filtration system, well, I can't really say I regret it, but I'm not really happy with it either. Nothing to do with the performance of the tool. It works great. It's just, I don't think I really needed it at that time. It's something that I could have easily bought at a totally different time because it's more in a price range that you can achieve later on. I didn't have to get it right then. The Rikon bandsaw, I'm gonna say, 50-50. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. And I really shouldn't say hate because it is a good tool. So don't really have any issues that way. It's that whenever I bought that bandsaw, there weren't a ton of options that were 14 inch bandsaws that had that 12 to 14 inch capacity. A lot of them at that time had that six inch stubby capacity and you had to add risers to it. So getting one that size in my price range, I kind of felt like I only had so many options. And now I feel like I have a lot more options. So. Kind of 50-50 on that one. The dust collector, no regrets on that one. I was kind of worried if it would be overkill or even underkill. Is underkill really a word? 
There's no way I'd want to go under the three horsepower. So I'm really good with that. I'm really happy I went with the 35 gallon drum and not the 55 gallon, because while I have to empty it more, man, moving 55 gallons of dust, that's a lot more work. The Jet Table Saw. This one is kind of a weird one. It is not a regret, because I really like that table saw a whole lot. It's, it's helping me build some pretty cool things. The price differences between then and now greatly differ. At that time, that Jet Table Saw was over $1,000 cheaper than a saw stop. Now, they're about the same price. So I would have absolutely bought a saw stop instead of that jet table saw if that was the same thing back then. And the drill press. This one, total regret. I didn't need that much of a drill press. What was I thinking? That's insane. I could use a bench top drill press and saved a ton of money. So total regret. Now, if you made it this far into the video and your takeaway is must be nice or hey, that guy blew all of his money, I think maybe there's a miscommunication in what's being said here. It's not really about how much money I had at that time to spend or just how wisely I spent it. It's really about that struggle that we have whenever we're trying to put together our shop, whether our budget is $100 or $100,000. And I get contacted by people all the time with questions about what should they get first, this tool or this tool. If they're putting up a shop, what do they do next? And well, I understand because it is really stressful, especially if you spent years and years saving up that money, I totally get you. But us makers are pretty resourceful and we're gonna end up making some pretty cool things regardless of the tools that we have. So get in your shop and build something awesome. One feisty Italian girl, no regrets.